Hello, my beautiful love bugs, and welcome back to another almost daily December video with me, your host, Nancy. I'm an entomologist, which means that I study bugs, and I live in Ecuador where normally I'm doing ecotourism, but obviously that isn't happening right now, so welcome to my YouTube channel. For the past couple of days, we have been doing book reviews, and today is the final day of book reviews. So if you're like, I don't want to buy any books, and I don't know anyone who wants any books, then skip to Monday, because after Monday, we are not going to be doing any more book stuff. We're doing it all right now. We have covered books for preteens all the way through young adults. We have covered some identification books and we have covered some books that are great for your coffee table, but maybe you or someone you know just like love insects so much that they don't want a surface level book. They want to deep dive. They want to know about the fundamental inner workings of insects. What are they doing? How are they working? Why are they doing that thing? You know, and they, they just need some in-depth resources. I obviously do not have every reference book in the world. However, I do have a few here that have really helped me and really shaped my knowledge and understanding of entomology and would be happy to share some of them with you as well. I have the books that I have physically present here with me. I live in Ecuador, so every time I need to get a book down, it takes up suitcase space and weight, which is not a very cheap commodity. And so I do not have all of my reference books, but I do have a few here that I use very often. So just note that there are more. I have linked all of these books and a couple extra in the reference section below. They are not sponsored. I am not sponsored to do this. However, they are an affiliate link, which means that you pay the exact same price as you would have, and I get a tiny fraction of a cut, right? It keeps everyone happy. So. Yeah, if you are looking for a book yourself or you know someone who just wants to deep dive into entomology, then here are some books for you. We're going to start with the heaviest because I've been picking up books all day. I did all of these, I did all this filming in one go. You can tell because my shirt and my makeup hasn't changed in the past four days. So um, we're going to pick up this one first, <laughs> which is like a 700, 800 page book on just beetles. When people are like, Oh, do you know about this random like little thing over here? And I'm like, probably not. I mean, there's like this 700 page book just on beetles. How can I know everything? I try hard though, but I fail. So this is Beetles, A Natural History and Diversity of Coleoptera. It has a sister book about flies, which I also want to get. I just have not gotten it yet because obviously this is a big and heavy book. I do use this a lot though, especially when planning videos or writing articles for Ask an Entomologist. So this is by Stephen A. Marshall and it's just a great, has great pictures in it. If you've noticed anything, if you've been watching all these book reviews, and I like pictures. <laughs> so great pictures, but also this is kind of weightlifting for the day. <laughs> Damn. I should have sat down and done this. No, I'll stand. I'll be good for myself. Anyway, it talks about different groups and classes of beetles. It talks about their different biology and how they're functioning. It talks about beetles as pest species. I would like tilt this more, but it's heavy. Um, it talks about their relationship with other insects. So this one, this whole section is about beetles and their relationship with termites and is just a great reference book. It has a decent amount of identification features in here as well. So it's just like, basically if you're into beetles, which I really am, I really love beetles. You might've been able to tell the beetle bias at all of my books. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it has like the family, it has some common or kind of, you know, characteristic species that you can ID from different parts of the world and it tells you where they're all from and just gives you really in-depth biology about some pretty obscure families that you might not get in a typical field book and definitely would not go into this level of detail about what we know about them. So here we are, <sighs> a 700 page book on just beetles and their biology. I'm gonna like put this down now. I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna see how many pages. 784 pages of beetle knowledge for your beetle enthusiasts in your life. Again, there's a sister book about flies. So link that picture in the description. I obviously haven't read that one. I don't have it. 
but I've heard it's good. <laughs> Other entomologists have highly recommended it. So. Um, and here we have The Sting of the Wild by Justin Schmidt. As you can tell, again, it has been in very many places with me. I love this book. Justin Schmidt, if you are a Coyote Peterson fan, or any of those boys who sting themselves with insects for clout, Justin Schmidt was kind of like the OG. He did that first and wrote a book about it. But what I really like about this book is that he is like, why does this insect have such a powerful sting? Instead of YouTubers rolling around on the ground crying about it, he talks about how being stung by these different insects and understanding their chemical ecology was really important to him. And what this chemical ecology is doing on us, on our physiology, how's this chemical ecology? Like, why does it hurt? What chemicals are in there to make it hurt? And then why do these insects need a, such a powerful sting? This is one of the books that I built my chemtails class around just because it has such good information. And he is a hilarious writer. I particularly like this section where Justin Schmidt talks about finding a bufo toad and wondering if it would be a predator of bullet ants and then tries to feed bullet ants to a toad. So, but first, some background information about said toad. Toads are among the most indiscriminate predators and are deterred by very little. If it moves, it's eaten. Hugh Cott reported his test of the palatability of honeybees to common English toads, Bufo Bufo, in 1936. He determined that the toads readily eat the first presented bee, and some learn after one or more stings that the bees are a bit too spicy for them. Other toads repeatedly ate bees despite having up to five stings before avoiding more bees. His studies showed that toads are hardy, readily endure stinging punishments, and are sometimes slow learners. But eventually, within seven days, all had learned that bees are not a preferred food. Given that toads seem to be the toughest predators around and were readily available around our table, we decided to test the palatability of bullet ants to them. We chose a random, good-sized toad and fed it a bullet ant. Down the hatch went the ant. The toad responded by hiccuping, body jerks, eyes bulging in and out, and mouth gaping. Apparently, the toad was stung. Would the toad learn? No. Down the hatch went a second bullet ant. Same toad reaction. Did it learn after two ants? No. Down went a third with the same reaction. The toad ate nine bullet ants in a row each time reacting to the stings. At this point, we had run out of bullet ants, so we tossed a non-stinging insect to the toad to see whether the reaction would be the same as for the bullet ant. Down the hatch it went without a hint of discomfort. Toads are tough and apparently might possibly be predators of the bullet ants, though something not reported from the field. This table side test shows how extreme a predator must be to tackle a bullet ant. He has great stories of him going out on all of his adventures and also talks about the chemical ecology of the animals, why they have stings that are so potent, what they're doing to you, and why they're there to help protect the insect. 10 out of 10, do you recommend? Next, we have two books by Th Thomas Eisner. We have For Love of Insects and Secret Weapons. They are very similar in the fact that they both cover chemical ecology. It just depends on how you want your information given to you. So this one is just literally separated by different insects and is like, okay, the two line stick insect, this is what it has and this is what we know about it. Okay, the, uh, like a predaceous diving beetle, this is what it has, this is what we know, what we know about it. And the whole book is just separated by these different insects like this, which I think is so helpful. When I was designing my chemtails class, this is another one of the books that I used a lot just because it was so easy to look up an insect and just get a profile about what the chemical ecology it has, why it's using it, and what studies have been done on it. But it was really, really great. If you're looking for more of just kind of like a read and just grouping that information together in ways that are more logical instead of like this bug does this, this bug does this, this bug does this. This book will break it down and group the insects by kind of behavior or what they're doing. So for example, this is all about nuptial gifts and how different insects 
integrate toxins and poisons into their sperm packets for the females and the female choice. So it, break, it groups a couple different groups of insects together that all kind of do this behavior and talks about the structures and the organs that the, if that the males and females are using to talk to each other and show that they have these different chemicals or don't have these different chemicals and we'll kind of get in, even into the, like, the reproductive tract. So it's like a much bigger story about these insects versus just being like a snapshot of each insect. They are grouped together in these different chapters. So this is For Love of Insects, also by Thomas Eisner. So again, these two, these two books are very similar in the same vein. It's just how you want your information given to you, and I love them both. Again, Chemtales was built around these two books as well. But certainly not least, if you are a firefly enthusiast, then I highly recommend this book by Sarah Lewis, who I met. She came to Ecuador. She's a firefly expert. I had the honor of doing a short tour with her in the cloud forest where we found a diurnal firefly, which was really exciting. Anyway, so she gave me this book at the end of her tour and I'm so, so, so grateful for it. I love this book. This book is a combination of science, so like how are fireflies reproducing, why are they producing their flashes, how like chemically what's going on, learning more about their biology. She talks about her experience with her students in the field and different experiments they've designed together. And she even talks about kind of some of like the mythology and the lore that goes around some fireflies. One of my favorite stories from this book was when she was talking about these fireflies that glow this kind of bluish color to our eyes. But when you actually study them, you'll see that they're emitting a green, green wavelength. But she talks about seeing these kind of eerie blue fireflies you know, flitting through the grass, which I think is just like so interesting. Um, but she has a lot of really good information just talking about fireflies in depth, really interesting pictures of their internal anatomy, really beautiful pictures of just like them and their flash patterns and how they're, you know, living their everyday life. She is also a really, really great writer and just like pulls you into these stories of, of the fireflies. And this chapter is all about the chemistry behind the firefly and how it can make its light, which I think is so, so interesting and talks about luciferin. And I really like that this is just one chapter of this book that uncovers so much more of the biology than just the fireflies flash, but also like their mating and their behavior and where you can find them in different kinds of fireflies. And, and you know, their fireflies are a lot more complex than you might think they are. All right, love bugs. I hope that you like going through a little bit of my library and I hope that you found some things that you might find interesting or maybe hopefully found some gifts for yourself. I mean, am I right? You give yourself the best gifts or maybe for someone else who is an entomologist in your life. I would like to thank you so much for watching. If you are tired of books, that's fine. I get it. Monday, we're going to be back to our regular like Ecuador and bug content. But until then, you can check a video here that's recommended to you by the YouTube algorithm. And you can check the Entomologist Reacts playlist down here, which is super fun if you want to see like big reactions. Oh my God. All right. I will see you all on Monday. Bye.